Last night's stream was out of this world. Had so much fun. Woke up to a copyright <laughs> little thing this morning, but whatever. I just need to be better about my music selection. I, uh, over the past week, have streamed twice. Loved every minute of it. Thank you to everyone who became a dad last night. For those of you who know, you know. It's the name of the channel memberships. We'll talk more about that later. But the purpose of the streams was really to showcase the docked mode version of the Steam Deck because that's kind of that's where I'm at right now with things. And uh, I got plenty of thoughts. Today's can, we're gonna go through that. Um, and the coffee of the day is this Tanzania from Perk Coffee. Got my airtight canister. All, everything's linked below, by the way. And then we're gonna, you know, have some fun with that. But I have set up my Steam Deck in such a way that it essentially is, I'm trying to get it to replace my console experience. I know it's not gonna be able to perfectly do it, and once I have a PC, it's not really necessary, so to speak, but the whole purpose of something like the Steam Deck was for it to be some sort of hybrid thing, right? That's kind of the appeal of a device like that. A portable device that you can also plug in and have a hybrid thing. I guess that's not necessarily the whole point of it. The point of it was more to bring your Steam library on the go, which it certainly does. But for me, I'm really interested in that hybrid gaming solution because I love the way the Switch handles it. It does it well, so I'm like, okay, how do we go about this? I personally have decided to go with the Steam branded one because I'm someone who's a sucker for first party, and so I went with Steam branded. There are a lot of other ones out there. This is the dock, by the way. They look so raggedy. I don't love this little floppy thing, but it is what it is. So I went the Steam Deck dock. My reasoning is first party seems to always just have better usability in a lot of ways. And from my experience and seeing others online, this doesn't really have a better way of going about it. In fact, other ones have better features. Maybe you can put an SSD in there. There are some like pretty cool other docks out there um, that I haven't tried but only seen. And they seem to work very well, if not perfectly well. You can also use just like a normal USB-C to multi-port um, adapter. I don't like using the word everyone else uses, dongle, I think it's a silly word. And so, USB-C to multi-port adapter. You just need to be able to output HDMI and input power, because even though it doesn't need power to push over HDMI, it would be better for a more consistent gaming experience for you to have power just delivered to the device at all times. Now I set this up a specific way so that it has better usability and a little bit more of a console feel out the gates. Um, but there are some drawbacks and setbacks, but I'll get to that in a little bit. The first thing that I'll do with my Steam Deck dock is I get a controller adapted to it. So what we have here, let me first pour off the next section, but I'll show you is the um, 8 bit Do Ultimate controller, the wireless controller. Now, my problem that I have encountered with this is this is designed for the Nintendo Switch, at least the button layout. Now, you can switch the button layout in your Steam Deck. You can go into, I think, settings, controller settings, something like that. You'll have to excuse me for not knowing exactly where it is, but you can switch the layout to where A, B, X, Y is switched so that the orientation here is what you're used to seeing. But for me, I realized that when I'm not playing a Nintendo Switch game or a Nintendo specific game, it is a little bit less um, intuitive to switch it to Nintendo style controls where the A is actually to the right versus the bottom button. And so for me, I just use my muscle memory to pretend that the buttons are actually the right buttons. So instead of me using A, B, X, Y this way, I just, the B is the A, and you guys get what I'm saying. So the first thing, as I said, that I'll do is, and we gotta go 18 to one, so 360, perfect, good. I will actually not use Bluetooth. I don't wanna use Bluetooth. I use the adapter. So this comes with a little adapter, a USB adapter, and I have this. Yes, I took this all apart just to show you plugged into my dock at all times. There are three USB ports, so I don't have to worry about input problems here. So I'm good. 
This thing is always ready to go. It's always looking for it. And then on the back, it's switched to the 2.4 uh, gigahertz thing. It has a Bluetooth switch, which is great because I can switch that over the Bluetooth and it'll work immediately with my Nintendo Switch. So this is actually dual purpose here. And it's the best controller that I think I can find to do the job. It's not my favorite. It's just the best to do the job. My favorite would be a PlayStation controller, but I know I have a few of them though. So I just, the Bluetooth, it's the Bluetooth. If I'm being honest, it's the Bluetooth connectivity. It's never as good as I want it to be. So the fact that I have 2.4 um, and it just is, a, you know, always here, that's great. So that's thing number one. I haven't done it yet, but I may. Um, I have a keyboard. Now the keyboard I have, my mouse and key, is by 8-Bit Doe. If I was more in the PC or desktop side of the Steam Deck, I may do that, but I'm not. So I would have done the same. I would have put the 2.4 in here and then had this, had that hardlined um, USB to the PC itself. I'm not in the 2.4 side. I mean, I'm not in the desktop side often enough. Three, one, two, three. So that just kind of stays where it is. Um, oh, this one was used and not washed. That's on me. I'm the only person here that uses these. Yeah, that was absolutely used and not washed. Look at me go, dude. Just being a silly, silly barkeep, bar barista. All right, let's see here. So the reason why I went with Kalita today is because we've been doing that Peru, not Peru. I keep saying Peru because it looks like it says Peru, but it doesn't say Park. We've been doing that um, Tanzania through the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the V60. And I like V60, but the problem is uh, it can be a little bit overpowering. And though it didn't taste that way, I want to see what the uh, Kalita tastes like. Kalita is a flat bottom, a flat bottom filter type of thing and so you get a more balanced cup it's easier to work with and so that's why we went with Kalita today um let's get a coaster for this awesome continuing on now the couple of issues that I have with this specific dock this is designed to use the steam deck normally now when I use the steam deck normally outside of this wonderful case this fits right here and it docks great beautiful when I put the case on like so on now I didn't do this right you gotta slide down then up it doesn't luckily you can slide this right in front because this will stand on its own it's great there's a flat bottom to it and boom it's done now is it as clean as I'd like it to be no but it still does the job and you probably have if I'm looking here I mean, if you look at the overhead cam, you can see there's so much space for it to go. So you're really not that, it's not that big of a problem. Now, what I do constantly have into this plugged, into this plugged, okay, maybe I should have some coffee. I'm first. super into this. On the trade coffee profile, you can select which ones you love. And this is gonna get a five star rating or a maximum rating. I don't even know what the rating scale is on there. Then the Perk Coffee Nyasi Faraha Peaberry, Tanzania wash process this is so good this is probably one of the top three coffees that i've had sent to me i'm i'm in love with this it's so good anyway yeah. um i have this plugged into uh a few things um there is a USB C port that's uh designated for power so i have that plugged in power i have hdmi plugged in so that i can use it with my tv i also have an ethernet cable or lan cable whatever you want to call it plugged in here um, so that I can use it uh, with better connection so I can download games faster because I have good fast internet Those are the few things that I do to have the dock now. There are some seamless ways not seamless, but there's some <sighs> Easy aspects to this and there's some complicated aspects to this okay, so let's just go from easy to complicated the easiest thing that I enjoy well first off um, with this this is the skull and code grip case which I freaking love um it makes my steam deck so comfortable and also the thumbstick risers not necessary i could do without them but i just like the feel and the way that this ends up looking i feel like this looks like a like a glock with a like a cerakote upper um or a slide it looks so cool anyway um <clears throat> the first so fingerprints 
thing that's cool about this too is this um this fits it's been this cut out here so the actual because this is kind of like angled um the actual dock steam deck dock itself fits perfectly fine here um, it was designed to work that way so that's kind of cool easy stuff plug and play it is almost plug and play and as someone who needs this to be as easy as possible because everything i do is checked up against how much time do i have my time is very very limited because of the kids and so i need the least amount of issues between the two and we're going to talk about scaling too first thing plug and play this when you plug it in even when it's connected to power you need to plug turn on the device and i'd say half the time it will fire up and go the other half the time it's not as easily uh, it's easily okay. also you have to excuse my voice it's all gross and yucky because you know, the whole mucus situation because of the weather change. Stupid. My face likes to explode with fury every time the weather changes. Continuing on. You want to turn the Steam Deck on before you plug it in. That for me has yielded a better result than plugging it in, than turning the Steam Deck on. Now, something that's kind of crazy is if you want, I don't know why you would, but you can, you could, you would have to use a different version of this, but you can have a longer cable and actually plug it in and have the image casted to the TV. And you could use this as your controller if you want. I think that's kind of big and bulky, so I'd rather put that, you know, hold this situation with the dongle instead. Anyway, turn it on, plug it in, you should be better off. In settings, there are a few things you can do, okay? I'm not gonna walk you through all these because this is not that type of video. I'm more just talking, speaking into the docked experience. You have to preset a couple things. It'll automatically scale to whatever monitor or TV you use. Now, I use a 4K TV. It wants to upscale the image to 4K and it doesn't do it perfectly. And so I changed a couple things. One, this is an 800p thing going on here really a lot of games from 720 and so because of the 720p aspect ratio or not aspect ratio is that aspect ratio 720 by whatever because of this I decided that I forced the scaling the scaling is set at 1440p 120 Hertz that's the maximum it'll go okay and so this is a 800p uh, 90 Hertz display on the Steam Deck when I was playing Hades on this, get 90 frames per second, no big. When I docked this and used it on my TV, is it the most beautiful thing out there? Is it scaling super well? Not super well. It's not flawless. I mean, it's a smaller image being pressed and opened, you know, pulled to a four, uh, 4K TV or whatever, or 1440p, um, 1440p image, 1440p resolution. I'm all over the place. It's not like the most beautiful crystal clear thing ever, but neither is the switch. So whatever. At any rate, um, when it's being used in dock mode, I was getting 120 frames per second. That was crazy. It can through this, whichever I'm holding my steam deck dock, but this is do anything. It can push higher frame rates than what is available to you on the actual machine itself. That was kind of cool. Now, Hades isn't demanding. It's a pretty lightweight game, as someone said. You're not gonna be getting that on every game, but still, that's a pretty cool thing that you can have higher frame rates than what the actual device allows. Now, here are some of the stumbling blocks that I experienced. When I was trying to set up the dock to run it on my TV, there were certain settings in there and the display settings that weren't working well. So 60 frames per second, 1080 for some reason wasn't working. 120 or 240 frames per second, 1440, not 1440, like 4K. Different resolution combinations with frame rate allowances weren't allowing the image to actually get pushed through. Now, I don't know if that's because the TV itself was having an issue, like reading that, I don't know. I, I don't know really anything about that. But what I can tell you from the very, very, practical aspect of things is after trying a few and looking up online 1440p 120 seemed to work across the board which is better because 
With a 720p image, it just scales really well. It's a two to one. And so it's just gonna be a better viewing experience overall. And so that's what I stuck with, 1440p, 120. And the real question is, will this replace my console gaming experience? And I wanna say that it will um, because of the ease of use. This is getting more into my life. My current life situation, and even moving forward in the next couple of years when my kids get older and older and older, this is absolutely the, the play. Um, I don't want to have multiple consoles anymore. I just don't. I don't wanna to have to deal with multiple libraries. I don't wanna deal with all that. I want one place to do the work so that I can be present in more ways in my life. Because um, it's just important to me to be able to maintain some level of this because this is a beautiful hobby that I love, but also be able to just go somewhere else, bring it with me if I need to or whatever it may be, sitting at a soccer game or whatever in between this, that, or the other when the kids aren't playing, whatever it may be. This is kind of my like reading, right? Other than of course the mangas that I read from time to time. And so I really like that. I also like the form factor and the portability aspect of things. I think that the Steam Deck and portable PCs in general, if I'm being honest, portable PCs, the Steam Deck happens to do the job the best right now, so it is what I choose, but portable PCs for me are absolutely the play and I will fight tooth and nail to make every single game that I purchase be purchased on one of these types of devices. It's far more important to me that I have this type of flexibility than I have the performance of something like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X for that matter. My PlayStation 5 has one game on it that I'm playing right now, but once that's done, that system could be as good as gone. I don't need it anymore. Sure, it can run Fortnite, it can run Call of Duty, and I don't play those on PC yet, but as I build out the PC, and don't worry, I'm doing all that here, as I build out the PC, that will then replace the necessity for something like a PlayStation 5. And as far as Nintendo is concerned, I love Nintendo. No, let me take that back. I don't love Nintendo. I love people, not things. I like Nintendo a lot. Nintendo has great things. They have always been the company that I find myself gravitating towards because of nostalgia. But I think I'm at a point in my life where nostalgia isn't gonna dictate my gaming experience. My gaming experience is primarily dictated by good storytelling and fun gaming mechanics. And if Nintendo can't bring that to the table, I'm not gonna stick by the whole, oh, I'm just gonna get Nintendo because it's Nintendo. I gotta be somewhat financially responsible. And since, since it seems like Nintendo's kind of pushing things out a year, for me, it's a year too long. I, if, if they would have come out last year with something, I might have been bought into the ecosystem, but it's so long in between their consoles and there's been so much fluff and really not much there for me that I just, have lost interest and I'm starting to invest in other ways. And because of the world that this has opened up for me, especially with the combination of something like this, which by no means is as seamless as a Steam, as a, a Switch. This experience has a lot of clunkiness to it. It's not plug and play. It's not super easy. It doesn't work every time. But when it does work, it works well, okay? But because of the, how long it's taken for Nintendo to just bring the next thing out, I'm like, okay, well, I need something better. And this is. By and large, with the exception, with the exception of first party titles played legally, okay? I'm not gonna talk about Yuzu, I'm not gonna talk about all these different things, okay? Legally able to obtain games, or they're not here, but they're in there. Um, this is just all around better. The gaming experience is better, the availability of titles at a higher resolution and frame rates better it's just a more robust system and it makes me at 35 with two kids feel like i'm actually using a piece of hardware that doesn't feel like a toy this feels actually like it matches me it matches my lifestyle and i would have never said that before because i was so trapped in the ideology of i'm a nintendo guy but i'm not i'm just a guy who wants to play video games now I will say that this experience works also very, very well on TV. And the reason why I can say that is because my monitor I use is technically a TV. Or my TV I use is technically a monitor. I don't know however you want to put it, but my monitor is a 4K, is this LG C2, which is an advertised TV. I'm just using it as a monitor. So when you were to, if you were to plug this into an actual monitor, a 1440p monitor, your experience would actually be exponentially better because it's gonna scale perfectly rather than a TV. 
So to answer your question, will this work with my TV? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I would frame lock your thing to 60 frames per second, get yourself a better gaming experience and a more stable one at that. I just like to push the boundaries to see what the maximum load is for something like this. And I can assure you that if you have 120 frames per second refresh rate, you can see it even higher if the selection will work. But that's what this guy allows. As I said, it isn't the perfect solution by no stretch. The perfect so the perfect switchable solution is the Switch, honestly. But it does it so well and close enough that it is enough for me to say this will eventually replace my gaming console kind of thing. Now, if you have a PC and you're using that as well, then there's really no need for you to do this. This is more for people who want that switchable. I guess you can put this on your TV. So I guess that's what this works for, for your TV if you want to do it that way. If that's something you're into and then you have your big beefy gaming PC in your office if you want. So maybe that's what this is for. And again, you can get different versions of this. You don't have to get the um, Steam Deck or the Valve one, but the Valve one does receive firmware updates. Now, I don't know if that's going to change a lot of things for you, but I do like the idea that this receives firmware updates and it seems like these things together just work really well. You're not having to deal with much, so. That's my uh, little one-two punch when it comes to these guys. I hope this helped you. The channel members thing that I was talking about becoming a dad, my goal is to get to 1,500 channel members. I know it's a huge goal, I have 31 now. If I get to 1,500, my wife gets to quit her job and that's pretty exciting for me. That means that I get to solely provide for my family with this, which would be pretty special. That's my plug, that's it. Um, and I'm gonna go enjoy a picnic on the beach with my daughter and my son. That's what I'm doing today. All right, guys, as always, happy gaming.